Well, folks, it is the March Madness time period here. NCAA tournament is in full swing. A lot of the top prospects, though, are already out. We've mm -hmm. seen guys like DeAndre Ayton get bounced very early in the tournament. So we're going to take a look at the top five prospects still left in this year's NCAA tournament. We start with number five. That is Shy Gilgis Alexander, S a.k.a. SGA. SGA, and I, I think... Much easier to say than Shy Gilgis yes, Alexander. Yes, very true. I think with when it comes to Shy, Shea, he's, he's going to be a really, really fun player in the NBA, but I think he's a project player. I don't think he's going to come in and make an instant impact. Look, he's not De'Aaron Fox. He doesn't have that kind of overall talent level, but I think he could come in and be a really nice player for a late lottery team. I think you could see him really fit in. I think a team like the Bucks could be a really good team for him if they end up dropping to him. I think the Clippers would be a good team for him as well, though they might end up with Colin Sexton anyway. Cars. I think with when it comes to Shy, he's going to be a fun NBA player to watch. I don't know if he'll end up being a starting point guard in the NBA, but at the same time, his ability to shoot from three is really, really special. So Shea Gilgis Alexander. We'll, click, we'll keep it easy going forward when we talk about this guy. SGA, a lot easier to say than a pretty tricky name there, has had a very good NCAA tournament run, has really emerged kind of down the stretch and been a big factor in their late season mm -hmm. surge. And as we know, guard play matters in a big, big way for the NBA and for college basketball as well. It, it really does. And I'm excited to see what he does over the course in the next couple of games. I think their matchup with Kansas State is going to be really, really big for him as well in his overall NBA draft prospects. I think he's going to be a lottery pick, but he's a project. He's not going to be able to start off right away. He's done a pretty good job of shooting from three this year. It is a little bit tougher, I think, in the NBA than in the NCAA to shoot from three, but a pretty solid look so far for SGA and the way he's played down the stretch for UK as they remain alive in the NCAA tournament. Let's get now to a Bridges at number four. It is not Miles Bridges. It is McCall Bridges, who's had a very impressive season for Villanova. He, he has, and I think he's the perfect modern-day NBA player. He's 3 and D. He is Trevor Ariza, but in his 20s. I think that Bridges is going to be... a little bit better. And maybe a little bit better as well. I think he's going to be a fantastic pick for any team. Imagine a playoff team with Bridges coming off the bench. A 3 and D guy who can instantly cover wings off the bench. He can hit threes. He's a great field goal percentage from outside the arc. He's also really good down low. He's a pretty decent rebounder as well. I think uh, him going around kind of mid-area where, uh, again, the kind of the lottery picks are. I think the Pistons would be a really good spot for him. They need outside shooting. That could be a nice slot for him. I think Charlotte would also be a really good slot for him as well. I think Bridges is going to come in and maybe have some instant impact in terms of his overall just in, you know immediate impact on the NBA. He's a really, really good player. But at the same time, there are still weaknesses to his game. I'd like to see his passing get a little bit better. I'd like to see him bulk up a little bit more and be able to guard some of the bigger guys in the NBA. But also at the same time, you look at the small forwards in the NBA right now. If he gets drafted to the Eastern Conference, you have the LeBron James, even to Jason Tatum on the Celtics. He doesn't have that kind of length that you want from a wing defender. He's not Paul George. He's more of a Trevor Ariza. I think at the same time, he's going to have difficulty against the bigger small forwards. But at the same time, he's going to be a really, really fun player right out of college. I think he's going to be one of those impact guys that is able to contribute right away. Mm -hmm. Probably not going to win National Player of the Year for Villanova because Jalen Brunson yep. might end up getting that one as well. But Bridges profiles a little bit better as an NBA prospect yep. than he does in terms, in terms of Villanova's best overall player. Let's head back to Kentucky for number three on our list. That is Kevin Knox. Hasn't shot that well from three-point range but he's had still very impressive numbers when it comes to scoring. The Duke can put up buckets. I think his overall kind of ceiling as of right now might be the highest. I understand that Bagley and Wendell Carter are still going to be on this list. Not saying what order they're going to be in, but at the same time, Kevin Knox's overall potential might be higher than both of them just because his overall ability to shoot from the outside is going to improve. I think he needs to go to the right team. If he ends up going to the wrong team that has a lot of forwards already, I think he's going to get into a lot of problems. But at the same time, Kevin Knox is going to be a really special player in the NBA. He should be a bench player for the first couple years. I would love to see maybe if the Lakers move back in the draft, I would love to see Kevin Knox go to a team like them, maybe come as a backup to, uh, you know, maybe come off the bench for Brandon Ingram to replace him every so often. I'm a big fan of Kevin Knox. I think he's going to be a really solid player in the, in the NBA. He needs to get better shooting from outside the arc, though I think that might be more of a Kentucky problem rather than an overall skill set problem. I mentioned this year, of course, the Lakers don't have their first round pick. Because no, 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 no I, I still think they're going to trade to the first round. Okay. Either way, I, I, I've said that from the game. I, I should have specified, but the, the, the Lakers are going to have a first round pick this year no matter what, whether or not they, they end up gaining that pick from uh, from the Sixers or okay. not. You'll see. Very, People very are talking. interesting there. All right, so Knox, maybe more of a mid-round lottery pick. Has the ability to score as well. That's a big mm. factor on that end. 
Folks, today's show is brought to you by Man Crates. If you know a guy that needs an awesome gift, well, you got to get him a Man Crate at mancrates.com. The NBA bar in particular is perfect for you guys. Everything you could want there. They've also got Jerky Grams Project Hits. they got some golf crates. If, if there's something that you like, Man Crates has a crate for you, and they're mm -hmm. awesome. They are fantastic. And again, we've opened up a couple of them. You can check them out on YouTube. They're super fun to open. Again, I can't get over the crowbar. I, wanna, I, I have one at home. They're fun. They're multi-purpose. You can open up bottles with them as well. Back to one quick note on Kevin Knox. I saw a comment from uh, Shin Cullens who said San Antonio could get Kevin Knox. That would That'd be, be a fun great. fit. That would be fantastic. I don't know how they get him, but it'd be a fun fit. Uh, another option for him as well, I think, would be the Denver Nuggets. I think the Ooh, Denver Nuggets okay. would also be a really good fit like for him that one. as well. All right, let's get then to number two. And hint, hint, the next two players are Duke players. At number two is Wendell Carter. You know, maybe a little bit undervalued because he plays with our number one player, but he's a very talented big man. I am going to get in on the my league that still loves them. I'm going to get on my hands and knees and beg for him to go to the New York Knicks. I think him and Madison Square Garden are absolutely built. He is built to go up uh, and play next to, uh, excuse me, to play next to Chris Porzingis. He's a fantastic player. He's one of the best defensive bigs like we have in the entire country. He's a diligent worker down low. I want to see him get a little bit on the offensive edge, but at the same time, probably one of the reasons his points per game isn't that high is because he plays with Marvin Bagley, who's going to dominate everything down low from an offensive standpoint. He's a great player. He's a smart player as well. Fun fact, he would have gone to Harvard if he had not gone to yeah, Duke. He is a smart man. He's a really, really cool guy. He actually uh, didn't go to one of his AAU championship games because he wanted to do his final performance for his drama club at high school. So this is a very multifaceted, highly intelligent guy. I, again, I think, New, I think New York Knicks at pick nine are the perfect I, place for I him. I come from this, unfortunately, from a little bit of an NFL draft perspective yep. where, unfortunately, you see players get docked because they aren't 155.7% focused on football. I think that we might see some type of that negative comments for Carter as well because he's so intelligent. Teams, I think, are at times almost intimidated by that. Yeah, and I think that's why he's going to be more going, so in the NFL than the NBA. But that, that's why I think he's going to go in the back half of the top ten. I think also maybe he could drop to the Clippers at twelve or thirteen. Look, it just it really depends on what he does in the combine. I know people don't think the NBA combine is a thing, but for people like Wendell Carter, it's going to be a really really big thing for him. All right, so Wendell Carter checks in at number two. A very talented defensive big as well can play power forward and center. I think so too can one Marvin Bagley, who uh, I think really almost consensusly is. He's the top prospect left in the NCAA tournament. He absolutely is. No disrespect to Wendell Carter, of course. I think at this point, it's not whether or not he goes into the top five. It's what team does he go to in the top five. It's either Phoenix, Memphis, Orlando, Atlanta, or Dallas right now. I think he'd be a perfect fit in literally any single possible system. I think he'd be great in Memphis. I think the Magic would be lucky to have him. But I would – no, I know this isn't going to happen because they're going to take Doncic or maybe even DeAndre Ayton. But I, I, would, I would love to see him go to the Suns and partner up with, uh, with Devin Booker. I understand that he's – his defense is they, they do but I think at the same time I know that his defense isn't that great but he is one of the most offensively dominant big men that we've had come out of the draft in a long long time he's not Julia local for people keep saying oh he might end up being Julia for he's he not Julia local for he can do way more I think he's a fantastic big down low and he's going to get better on defense if you send him to the Grizzlies give him a year or two with Marcus Saul to kind of learn the ropes of the NBA I can't wait to see what Bagley turns into. And also, he has the drive that you want at NBA players. He wants to be great. You know, he takes less than two threes a game, but he is hitting 38% of them. Mm -hmm. So I think there's some, some stretch potential Look, there. Even Anthony Davis, when he first came out of the draft, took a couple years before he started extending out his range. I mean, Brooke Lopez is starting to shoot threes. Marcus Saul is sitting at the top of the key now as well. So if you're a big, you have to learn how to shoot threes. And I think Bagley has the ability and the drive in order to want to do so. All right, so Harris, who do you think should go number one in the NBA draft? I Personally, I think it's going to be DeAndre Ayton from, uh, from Arizona, but I think that Marvin Bagley, if he has a good end of the tournament, w could end up going number one. If Duke wins the tournament, I don't see why he shouldn't go number one. I get that Ayton is fantastic. I get that Doncic is really fun. But, man, Marvin Bagley is a really special player. I think, you know, I hate using this term for prospects. Do Marvin Bagley. The words unicorn comes out of your mouth. No, he's not a unicorn. He's not a unicorn. He can't shoot yet. I think he's a safe prospect, and I think that's his best quality right now. Awful lot of unicorns out there in the Too NBA. Too many unicorns. All right.